Crooks defending crooks. That's what the NADA is attempting to do on behalf of car dealers. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Today we are bringing you our reaction to the NADA's campaign video trying to defend their crony club, car dealers, from scrutiny by the FTC. The video is just a couple minutes long, so we'll play through it the first time so you can hear it uninterrupted. And then we'll give you our reaction to the nonsense that's in it. Pay special attention to the fact that the NADA tries to play the role of the victim. Poor in, guys. Yeah, literally whining about the FTC, claiming they are needlessly picking on dealers in what they portray to be a near-perfect world for car buyers. Yeah, something 87% of car buyers totally disagree with. Totally disagree with. It's like so perfect out there, right? <laughs> Well, listen to the arrogance by the NADA and the denial of truth of how bad things have gotten in the car business. Now, let's roll that propaganda video. Buying a car. It's one of the biggest purchases you'll make. And it's a complex transaction with loads of forms, disclosures, and paperwork required by the federal and state governments. But that complexity and all those forms you have to sign New regulations would make the transaction even more complicated and confusing if bureaucrats in Washington have their way. Let's take a look. In today's trillion-dollar automotive market, about 45 million new and used cars are sold each year at dealerships. More than 160 million vehicles are taken for repairs and service. All told, consumers interact with dealerships over a billion times each year. But the federal government is proposing new regulations that would require three new forms to be filled out and presented to a consumer, two for signing, if you decide to finance a vehicle and buy a product like an extended service contract. And a new form would be required each time you ask about a different vehicle. More forms with questions not only about the new vehicle price, but also about trade-ins, down payments, rebates, financing costs, and extended warranties. Every time you so much as ask about a vehicle or how to finance it, there are new disclosures involved, in addition to all the forms and paperwork that already have to be filled out when you purchase the vehicle. But it goes further. Dealerships would effectively not be able to answer questions about monthly payments for different vehicles unless you sign new disclosures over and over. The government would also effectively require dealerships to retain every written sales or financing interaction they have with a customer, including emails, texts, chats with the sales or financing representatives, on top of the loads of forms that are already kept. And it would do all this without ever having tested these proposals in the real world to see if they actually work with consumers. What on <laughs> earth is going on here? Over the last 10 years, local dealerships have sold more than 450 million cars and serviced vehicles more than 1.5 billion times. Over those 10 years, the FTC has prosecuted wrongdoing at dealerships 37 times. Every consumer deserves to be treated fairly, and each of these enforcement actions is serious. When wrongdoing happens, the law is clear and the federal government already has the tools to rightly enforce the law against those who break it. But 37 instances in 10 years, over 450 million transactions, is just not evidence of a widespread problem. And instead of going after the outliers, these regulations would radically change the car buying process for everybody. Adding layers of complexity, new forms and disclosures to fill out multiple times in the car buying process. And as 80% of new car dealerships are now able to sell vehicles online, these new regulations could thoroughly frustrate progress in online sales. And all this at a time when consumer satisfaction at the dealership is increasing substantially, even in the studies that the government cites. It's 2022. The whole world is online, including car sales. Today's transactions should be easier and simpler, not more complex and burdensome for consumers. Tell the FTC its new rule on vehicle sales is unnecessary and that they should continue to enforce the laws on the books, not create new complex rules that will make car buying more complicated, hurt consumers, and stand in the way of progress. Paid for by NADA. All right, so NADA sings a little woeful song about these new rules supposedly hurting consumers and completely turning a blind eye to all this nonsense that has gone on. All right, now let's roll that video again, and this time we'll do some stop starts as we interrupt their nonsense propaganda. Okay, but first off, that music track is really sketchy. It makes me think they're up to something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They are up to something. They are. Buying a car. It's one of the biggest purchases you'll make. 
and it's a complex transaction. With loads of forms, disclosures, and paperwork required by the federal and state governments, but that complexity and all those forms you have to sign, new regulations would make the transaction even more complicated and confusing if bureaucrats in Washington have their way. Let's take a look. In today's trillion dollar automotive market, about 45 million new and used cars are So in 2021, there was actually 40.9 million. Now, I know they're using an average here of 45 million cars, but 40.9 million in 2021. Sold each year at dealerships. More than 160 million vehicles are taken for repairs and service. All told, consumers interact with dealerships over a billion times each year. Huh. Way too many times. That's a way too many times. But the federal government is proposing new regulations that would require three new forms to be filled out and presented to a consumer, two for signing. If you decide- All right, so new disclosures, no more cheating, misleading, and lying to people about stuff. That's basically what those those forms are slamming the door on. So, yeah, I think a few pieces of paper is not a big deal when you think of the return. <laughs> yes to finance a vehicle and buy a product like an extended service contract. And a new form would be required each time you ask about awesome. a different vehicle. More forms with questions not only about the new vehicle price, but also about And these new forms, by trading. the way, require voluntary consent by you, the car buyer. NADA doesn't even mention this. It requires voluntary consent by you, the car buyer. Down payments, rebates, financing costs, and extended warranties. Every time did, you, you did you know that down payments, as an example, are something that is very commonly stolen by the finance officer? In fact, if you mention cash down a little too early in your conversation, they start to position the sales proposition they're going to give you in finance around that. And they start taking that down payment away with fees and products and all kinds of things they're packing into your car deal. Right. So much as ask about a vehicle or how to finance it, there are new disclosures involved. In addition to all the forms and paperwork that already have to be filled out when you purchase the vehicle. But it goes further. Dealerships would effectively not be able to answer questions about monthly so payments for this is actually a really good thing right here about dealers not being able to answer questions about payments. They put all this attention on car payments instead of car price. And so something like the Foursquare under these new rules would essentially be dead. And that's a good thing. That's a Vehicles, great thing for customers. Unless you sign new disclosures over and over. The government would also effectively require dealerships to retain every written sales <laughs> or financing interaction they have with No customer, more lying about prices emails, and fees texts, and add-ons. Chats with the sales or financing representatives on top of the loads of forms that are already kept. And it would do all this without ever having tested these proposals in the real world to see if they actually work with consumers. Oh, wah, wah here. <laughs> Trying to portray dealers as the victims here. Right. What on earth is going on here? Over the last 10 years, local dealerships have sold more than 450 million cars and serviced vehicles more than 1.5 billion times. Over those 10 years, the FTC has prosecuted wrongdoing at dealerships 37 well, times. Well, the FTC is just slow to react. I mean, they're finally getting off the line. So, like, why slow them down? Yeah, well, you know what? The FTC has indeed done very little to go after car dealers in the past. And all the nonsense that we hear about going on at car dealers all across the country, uh, FTC, you guys definitely need to get off your butt cheeks and do something about what goes on at car dealers. Every consumer deserves to be treated fairly. And each of these enforcement actions is serious. When wrongdoing happens, the law is clear and the federal government already has the tools to rightly enforce the law against those who break it. But 37 instances Stop in 10 years, moment. over four- I agree that there are laws already on the, on the board. What these rules do is create clarification for what those laws mean. Right, make it very concrete and easy to say you broke it. Yes. 450 million transactions is just not evidence of a widespread problem. <laughs> and you know what? Not evidence of a widespread problem. You know what? This past spring, uh, like Hyundai and Ford Motor Company and several manufacturers wrote letters to their dealers warning them against using deceptive pricing practices and all the nonsense that they were putting customers through, saying that they were ruining not just the opportunity for additional sale uh, at that dealership, but ruining the brand itself. Right, so they're feeling it and they're responding to it. <laughs>
Yes. Yep. So, tons of evidence. Instead of going after the outliers, these regulations would outliers. radically change the car buying process uh -huh. for everybody. 87% of car buyers absolutely hate car buying and they want to, NADA is attempting to say that the dealers that are pulling this nonsense that the rules would affect are actually outliers as is, as if they are in the minority. Yeah. Adding layers of complexity, new forms and disclosures to fill out multiple times in the car buying process. And as 80% of new car dealerships are now able to sell vehicles online, these new regulations could thoroughly frustrate progress in online sales. And all this at a... Actually, you wouldn't have to go to as many car dealerships, right? To purchase a car if the process went really well and smoothly and legally. So I think that's just bogus. Yeah. And, right. and the dealers were required to disclose their fees and everything else up front. It all had to be uh, disclosed. I think that'd be excellent. Yeah. Time when consumer satisfaction at the dealership is increasing substantially, <laughs> even in the stuff. Right. Increasing substantially. You know something? Uh, online reviews have been manipulated in recent years more than ever before. And even organizations like DealerRater.com. You know why that even got started? Because they couldn't manipulate the reviews enough on Yelp and the reviews enough on Google. So, there, you know, I've, I've, I've actually seen other creators on YouTube who have referenced the uh, rating for their dealership on Dealer Raider. And uh, yeah, it's just a stinking joke. Dealer Raider has like five star reviews on dealers all the time. And it's a bought and paid for subscription service. Yep. Studies that the government cites. It's 2022. The whole world is online, including car sales. Today's transactions should be easier and simpler, not more complex and burdensome for consumers. Tell the FTC its new rule on vehicle sales is unnecessary. There you have it. The total pretense that everything is perfect. Right and that they should continue to enforce the laws on the books, not create new complex rules that will make car buying more complicated, hurt consumers, and stand in the way of progress. It will hurt crooked dealers and help consumers get fair treatment. Yes. Paid for by NADA. I love that zip zero nada. <laughs> zip zero nada, yes. Well done on that one. <laughs> Ah, well, we'll put the link to the NADA video up so that you guys can go there and you can fill up the comment section with a healthy dose of reality. But if you go there and comment, you might also get blocked and kicked off their channel because that's the last thing they want to publicize is the truth. That's right. Yeah. You'll notice that the mighty NADA only has 1,250 subscribers because before now they have literally put out nothing of value to consumers. Nothing. The NADA also put out a video hosted by Paul Metry. It has just 500 views, but also protests the FTC rules and presents it as a huge problem for dealers. Well, Mr. Metry, maybe if you had put an ounce of energy into convincing your dealer network to stop deceiving their customers, to stop gouging them with huge fees and surprise add-ons, these rules might have been avoided. But NADA was a little too focused on your mission which is accelerating the success of automotive retail industry and not giving a hoot about ethical and honest ways of doing business. Now with your hand caught in the cookie jar, now you beg for mercy? No chance. Now for a brief update on XCAPS from MPG Extreme. Like most Americans, are you feeling the pain at the pump? As hundreds of happy customers around the country are finding out XCAPS is your solution. Are you ready to join them? If you're driving a vehicle that's two, three, four, five years old or older, you're a perfect candidate. Visit the link on the screen and get started saving money on gas or diesel today. Get a volume discount, which is 100 X caps for 199 plus shipping. That's the way both of us went. Isn't that right, Liz? Yep, I ordered the 100 caps too. If you have any trouble placing an order or have any questions about signing up as an ISR, you can email me at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call 701-441-3399. I'm always glad to help you. And if you're new here, don't forget to like, comment, and share with others and subscribe. Thanks everyone for coming back. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.